Hello, my name is Christian Furr. Um, I'm doing my NIL proposal to the University of Georgia. Um, first, I'm going to summarize um, a little bit of Georgia's NIL um, legislation, and then I'm going to go into talking about the NCAA NIL policies that are current, and then I'm going to give you my proposal um, at the end. Um, on July 1st, uh, 2021, the state of Georgia declared that um, they would allow students to seek compensation for their name, image, and likeness. Um, however, the state of Georgia's NIL legislation is a little bit more unique and complex than some other states that um, in the United States of America that have uh, decided to enact NIL laws. Um, some of those um, policies um, that are kind of weird are um, the state of Georgia can elect to require 75% um, of their student athletes uh, compensation for their NIL deals. Um, and another thing that is kind of awkward is that um, they would not be allowed for st student athletes who did uh, elect to have some NIL deals. They could not receive their money until uh, 12 months after they graduate from that school or um, if they decide to transfer uh, to a different school, they couldn't get it until 12 months after uh, their release. So the, both of those are, I thought were kind of weird. Um, there are many what if situations within Georgia NIL um, legislation policies. Um, like what if, you know, if a school does elect to take 75% or what if they don't? Um, it's, it's basically up to the schools um, to decide if they want to um, implement NIL deals or, um, or NIL policies or not. <clears throat> um, both the House and Senate of Georgia's elected Congress um, passed this bill, but essentially they gave the power um, to the collegiate athletic programs to decide if they wanted to um, implement uh, NIL policies. Um, Passing the blame or passing the power onto somebody else is a pretty common theme um, throughout talking about this uh, NIL bill. <clears throat> NIL bill. Um, so for my SWOT analysis for the Georgia's uh, NIL policies, the strength of the Georgia NIL legislation is that it requires um, a student athlete to provide at least five hours of financial literacy and. Um, life skills workshop during their freshman and sophomore years. Um, the weakness is if a school does adopt um, or elect to take a portion of compensation from the student athletes, um, the weakness would be that they would not be able to receive any money until 12 months after they end up leaving the school or, or decide to transfer from that school. Um, for external opportunities, um, um, that are in Georgia's denial legislation, um, student athletes would not be, um, student athletes can seek professional uh, representation such as sports agents or sports attorneys and helping them um, complete all legal, legal matters of the NIL deals, which I think is really great. Um, a threat of Georgia's legislations would be if a school does adopt um, some type of pooling arrangement or if they decide to take a certain amount of um, a percent of the money that the student athlete makes. Um, and if say another school in Georgia does not, they're not gonna take any money, obviously that's gonna be um, unfair for uh, recruitment um, and just in sports in general. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the NCAA. Um, policies, uh, the interim policy, I should say. Um, currently, there are 28 states that ha allow some type of NIL deals, and there's 22 states that have not elected to have NIL deals um, for their student athletes to uh, seek compensation or get compensation for their name, name image, and likeness. Um, this interim policy just seems rushed and it seems sloppy. Um, the NCAA officials pretty much folded and were like, oh, okay, yeah, it's up to the state to decide if they should, if they want to pay their players or not. That's basically the, the school's uh, 
this, this it's the school's decision, which just doesn't make sense. But um, the biggest strength of this uh, of the NCAA NIL policy is that it does allow um, student athletes to benefit um, from their name, image, and likeness. It, it is that is a stepping stone. I think that is going in the right direction, and I do value that as important. But the weakness is that the inconsistency from states um, allowing their student athletes to uh, get paid. Um, and there's some states that still have not passed any NIL um, policies and just the inconsistency of it all just just doesn't make sense. Um, for the external opportunities um, within this policy in, in the same as the is the same as the uh, Georgia's um, NIL policy is that the student athletes having the opportunity to seek professional guidance to seek outside help, um, and third parties, uh, such as sports agents or sports attorneys, um, to help guide them to um, make uh, to hike to help guide them through uh, making NIL deals with different organizations. Um, and obviously, the biggest external threat um, is the recruiting disadvantages in, in states that do not allow um, for their for their student athletes to get paid, and then for states that do allow athletes to get paid. Um, the, the recruiting disadvantage is just ridiculous. And these schools are making up conferences. In a given conference, there could be up to six or seven different schools um, from different states. And just having states that do allow it and having states do not, it's just, it just doesn't make sense. But okay, from my policy, um, I will not be electing to take any money from uh, my student athletes um, at the University of Georgia. Uh, I will be not electing any sort of their compensation. Um, to stay on the recruiting process, my NIL, my NIL proposal prohibits NIL opportunities from being used as a recruitment inducement um, or a substitute for pay for play. Um, there will, I will also be making it mandatory for uh, my student athletes to have at least five hours every single semester dedicated uh, to attending uh, workshops and financial guidance workshops that we'll have and um, also every single deal that our student athletes make um, it will not be finalized until the athletic director or the assistant athletic director uh, sign off on it um, i think it's important for the head athletic director to know what every single NIL deal that his uh, student athletes have. And yeah, that could be a big job, but this is why I think it is so important to, to have some oversight, to have someone to be in the know and to help guide these um, uh, student athletes. And to also help with that, I wanna hire 20 um, financial advisors or financial, um, yeah, financial advisors uh, to help guide my uh, student athletes within my athletics program. Um, and for, with those 20 uh, financial advisors, they're gonna be all grouped, have a, their own group of players, um, basically like subcommittees over um, my student athletes. But obviously the athletic director is gonna be, remain uh, at the top of the food chain when it comes to finalizing NIL, NIL deals. Um, this proposal follows the NCAA uh, NIL agreement that is already in place um, about not allowing <clears throat> uh, an agreement to go through that is a uh, quad pro quo. The University of Georgia will not provide any sort of compensation uh, to the student athletes for the use of their uh, student athletes name, image and likeness um, in order to get them to commit to our athletic program. Finally, to protect our student athletes, and this proposal includes that our athletic program shall provide um, for the implementation um, implementations of the provisions that do not discriminate against or treat individuals differently based upon race, gender, sex, um, or other personal status protected by federal law.